Hello indie game fans! As we wind down the year, I thought that we should take a look and appreciate the pixel art indie games that came out in 2019 since it's nice to gaze upon the majesty and beauty that is modern high-bit pixel art. These have been handpicked and are, at the very least, decent enough games to play, so here are the best looking pixel art indie games of 2019 part 1. Odd Realm is a colony sim in the vein of Rimworld, but in a fantasy setting with a much more zoomed out perspective. There are different fantasy races, enemies and creatures that will attack, 4 biomes to explore, and 15 plus settler professions. What I like the most about these sorts of games is the emergent gameplay stories that will result from the interaction of the game's systems, and there looks to be plenty of opportunity for that in this game. Very solid one of these, which is still in early access, but patches and updates have come at a steady clip, so fully confident that it is on schedule. The Eternal Castle Remastered is a fake remaster of a game that is said to have come out in 1987, but uses the awesome 2-bit CGA look. There's quite the mystery behind the story of this game and why you are there, with different areas ranging from ruins, a forgotten city, a creepy, unholy lab, and even the Eternal Castle itself. The colours used are very bold and leave a significant impression, so something that does really look visually stunning. Do yourself a favour and pick this up. Rava and the Cyclops Curse is a very retro looking platformer where you play as the Owl Mage Rava and must defeat the Cyclops Lord. You have 4 familiars to help you along the way, which you can switch freely between at any time, each with a different type of projectile, and the throwback look is very well done. Vision Soft Reset is a mini metroidvania which may have been overlooked by many of you and is all about time mechanics from rewinding time to foreseeing the future. Definitely a smaller title that may not have gotten the attention that it deserves, so I hope that this video at least puts it on your radar. Meepo Station is another space station builder that looks to fulfill the promise of the unfortunately cancelled Space Base DF9. As with all base builders, it is about building up a self sustaining ecosystem for your meeples, providing for their every need, but in this, there is an antagonistic force that will periodically attack your base. This was released in Early Access and has been having updates released on average every two weeks, so things seem to be going well. The 
The pixel art, especially in larger space stations, is especially satisfying since everything moves like some sort of Rube Goldberg machine and is pretty nice to watch. Another mini Metroidvania mixed the list with Sunukong vs Robots from Chinese indie developer Bitka. And I like the mixing of a traditional Chinese folktale with robots of all things, where traditionally this character battled with demons, spirits, and monsters. It's a nice smaller experience and well worth a look. One of the titles that impressed me the most this year in terms of pixel art is Demon's Tilt, a three-stage pinball table that evolves as you play. There are demons, manticores, a high priestess and more occult imagery, and the sheer amount of detail and systems in this is really stunning. It can be a little bit difficult to get into, but if you love pinball, this is a no-brainer. Strange Telephone is a Japanese indie game with quite the interesting premise since you key a string of six numbers and symbols into a telephone which then transports you to another realm. Kinda quirky and weird, with multiple endings and adorable pixel art characters like the telephone itself and even the rabbit seen in the trailer. Another stunningly detailed pixel art game is Ratona, a puzzle platformer with parallel universes, a branching story and alternate endings. The two interconnected versions of the world will interact with each other depending on your actions as you puzzle your way through 32 levels with cause and effect consequences. This is ultimately a story about identity, memory, and the true nature of self. The Earth is adrift in a mysterious and limitless cosmos to which mankind is as ignorant as it is insignificant. Those who have left the humanity far behind whisper of the great old ones. Gods. Titans and monsters that comprise and control the very fabric of our malignant reality. In their wake there is only insanity and death. This is why the stories of the rare few to stand against them go untold. Lovecraft's Untold Stories is an action roguelite where you fight a cult and monsters as you seek out knowledge to defeat the great old ones themselves.
there are five different characters, ranging from a detective, thief, professor, witch, and ghoul, each playing quite differently, as well as unlockable weapons, items, and artifacts. Fantastic sense of atmosphere conveyed by the pixel art. Our dominion grows. Perish. Nature will claim you. <laughs> I am not here to play. Wargroove was my most anticipated game for 2019 since it is basically fantasy advanced wars with such an awesome look due to the beautiful pixel art. That's enough. This should be advantageous. <laughs> there has been some controversy recently to do with the developer and the exploitation of labour, which is a very bad look, making me hesitant to shout out or even cover Chuckle Fisher's games. But I certainly hope lessons have been learned and that people can change. You never see me coming. <laughs> <laughs> Putting that aside, Wargroove is a wonderfully put together package with an extensive story campaign that does get difficult in the later levels. My next victim. While the story is perhaps a little generic, I did have enough of a push to keep me playing. And the game is rounded off with multiplayer support, a level and campaign editor, a puzzle mode, extras and secrets, so as a turn-based strategy game, something that I would recommend. For more of the best indie games, do check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.